Video Smith. Welcome to Divine Christian Church, a Christian fellowship where we serve God in spirit and in truth. John 4, 23 to 24. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your grace this morning. Father Lord, we pray that as we deliver the word this morning, as we teach your word this morning, Father Lord, we pray that you send the Holy Spirit to guide us, to help us, Father Lord, to know what you want us to know, Father Lord, and that you will guide us and direct us in the way that we should go, Father Lord, and we thank you for your grace this Stewardship, which is part of our lessons we've been going through on our daily revival, which is uh, stewardship, a form of service as well. And um, we are going to see what we do as Christians in the church and how we do service in the God's kingdom in our church. So what is service? service? The spiritual discipline of service means choosing to do something for someone else, often in secret. What is expecting and anything else in return. So therefore, you're often doing this thing and expecting anything not in return. It is something we do and we do not expect anything in return. We do not get paid for the services we do in the kingdom of God, though some other people actually expect it to be paid. Service also involves seeing a need and meeting the need without expecting thanks or any type of reciprocity, which is a situation of relationship which exists between two people and they do something in terms of an agreement. They are also very quiet People who don't know them, but then you see them, it is important that therefore we have this kind of understanding to know what service does and how it helps us. Serving God and interest of his kingdom secures your future. So if we serve God in his kingdom, it will secure our future. It is very, very important as Christians that we continue to serve God and also this question was asked once, what is service? We are called and given the self, service to God and man. And we are God's servants, as the mouth speaks. So therefore we are servants of God. And there we are called to serve God. And therefore when we serve God, we have to actually dedicate our lives in serving God. And we have to do it with uttermost the attitude we develop when we want to serve God. We have to serve God and um, with our whole mind, our whole soul, and with our whole hearts. There are two types of services we have. We have the spiritual service and then we have the physical service. We are first going to talk about the physical service and then before we go to the spiritual service. What is this physical service? The physical service there have given us examples of buying clothes for the homeless persons, providing shelter and accommodation for someone who is in the street. Example, a man and a daughter who are homeless by bringing them and providing accommodation for them. We can also grow the kingdom by other secular ch charities, outreach examples. The church can have an orphanage as well, wherever you can go down there and help indeed need provide accommodation. And shelter. Let's try and look at the scripture here and see what it talks about. 
providing uh, shelter and accommodation. Our scripture actually reading is taken from the book of um, Exodus 23, 24 to 25. In 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 2, it says, Moreover, it is required in stewards that one be found faithful. We have to be faithful. We have to be found faithful when we are doing this work of God. It is not something that we come and just want to do, but we have to be faithful in what we are doing. And as we gave an example of the physical um, services that we do, you have other examples like you have um, people who provide services in terms for their own economic gains, for their own economic riches, whereby they provide that so that they can benefit from that. And therefore, when we look at that, we can look at we have a very important business magnet from Richard Bronson, who has got Virgin Media, he's got Virgin Atlantic Airlines, he's got Virgin Trains, he provides services. So here we see him as somebody who provides services for the economic services as well, we can see as part of the heart of our financial gain. So we see people here who are providing all these services especially Virgin Atlantic, Virgin Trains, Virgin Media, Planes. We also, also have economic services like British Gas. They provide all these services for us. The British Airways, British Rail, and so on and so forth. We have the physical aspect of the services there that they provide. Now we are going to look at the spiritual services, which we are going to concentrate on here. And the spiritual services are more important in our lives. That is the kingdom of God by the children of the church, different areas of services in terms of the uh, spiritual services we offer. We have the ushers, we have the choristers and the choir team, we have the administrative team, which is the smooth running of the church in the church. They provide spiritual services. We have the comms team as well, Sister Comfort and other members who are involved in that team. They manage the affairs of events and other things. We have also other teams like um, the um, intercessory group. That is also another group. They are very quiet people. They don't know. You don't get to know them. You don't even get to see them. But they also pray. They pray for one another. And especially when we pray in terms of our burdens and pains become important for us in our lives. Our prayer is done out and this is what we call the agape love kind of thing which we do. And when we pray for one another, our prayers are answered. But when we talk about spiritual service, a very good example is taken from the book of Genesis chapter 4. Let's try and read a little bit of there and see whether we can see an example of spiritual services. Genesis chapter 4. It says, Now Adam knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived and bore Cain, and said, I have acquired a man from the Lord. Then she bore again the time his brother Abel, now Abel was a keeper of sheep, but Cain was a taller of the ground, tiller of the ground. And in the process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought an offering of the fruits of the ground from the Lord. Abel also brought off the firstborn of his flock and of the fat. And the Lord respected Abel and his offering, but he did not respect Cain and his offering. And Cain was very angry and his countenance fell. So the Lord said to Cain, Why are you angry? And why has your countenance fallen? If you do well, will you not be accepted? And if you do well, sin lies at the door, and his desires for you to buy you should rule over it. Now Cain talked with Abel, his brother, and it came to pass when they were in the field that Cain rose up against Abel, and his brother killed him. Then the Lord said to Cain, Where is Abel, your brother? 
He said, I do not know. I am my brother's, am I my brother's keeper? So here we see another form of service. We are Cain and Abel. We can see that in example Genesis um, 4, 3 to 5 there. So if you read that 3 to 5 there, it says, and the process of time came to pass that Cain brought an offering of the fruits of the ground of the flood. And Abel also brought the firstborn of his flock. So here we can see that Cain's service was rejected. Abel did his service with humility. He served God, he treated God with respect. And it's important here that we do things when we do service, we have to do things with our attitude, the attitude we demonstrate, what we show. Here we have, especially in the church today, we have cleaners, we have the sanctuary keepers, they clean the house of the God, the teachers and the children's class, various things in the class. So it is important that when we do things for God, we do it with quality of service. We can see here, Abel was able to show transparency. He was able to be treated. He treated God with respect. And therefore his offering and his service was important for us as Christians. So it is important, brethren, that we continue to take the word of God very, very serious, especially when we are doing the work of God. We have to do things that will help us, things that will allow us to do the work of God and whereby they can be accepted. So it is important for us, brethren, that we see how important the word of God is and how we can look into it and see. Let's just try and read a few scriptures there. Ephesians 6, verse 7 and 8 says, With good doing service to the Lord and not to men, knowing that wherever good anyone does, he will receive the same from the Lord, whether he is same from the Lord, whether he is a slave or free. So with good will doing service as the Lord and not to men. So here we are supposed to do good in terms of our service that we do to men and we do to God. And therefore we will have benefits from that. Walk with enthusiasm as though you were working for the Lord rather than people. Remember that the Lord will reward each one of us for the good that we do, whether we are slaves or free. So we have to work with enthusiasm, not rather for men, but for God as we are doing. When we are doing it with our own mind, with our own soul, with our own heart, then we will get the rewards of that. Remember that we are not working for men, but we are working for God. So here, when we are providing service, it is important that we do the things of God. We have to concentrate. We have to do it with our own hearts and with our own minds. And it is important that we begin to see how important when we do service. Service helps us quite a lot. If we look at the scripture again, Luke 18, it tells us how important service is important in our lives. Luke chapter 18, verse 28 to 30. It says, Then Peter said, See, we have left all and followed you. So he said to them, Assuredly, I say unto you, there is no one who has left house, or parents, or brothers, or wives, or children, for the sake of the kingdom of God, who shall not receive many times more than the present time, and the age to come in eternal life. So here we see, they've left everything so far. House, parents, everything, and followed. So it's important here too as well that it is important for us here as Christians that we do the same thing. Leave everything that you want to do and follow Christ. Do a service. Peter said, see how I left, I followed you. For he said to them, as surely I said to you, there is no one who has left house or parents or brothers or wife or children for the sake of the kingdom of God. So it is important here that we leave everything and serve God and serve God in this kingdom. And it will help us to do anything we are doing, I will do it with our right minds and with our own friends. James chapter 2, verse 16 and 17 tries to emphasize a little bit of service as well. James chapter 2, verse 16 and 17. It says, 
If a brother or a sister is naked and destitute of daily food, and no one of you says to them, Depart in peace, be warned and filled, but you do not give them the things which are needed for the body, what does it profit? Then also fought by itself, it does not have works without death. So there is telling us again that faith without works is without death. Especially when you see somebody who is in destitute, that's what the book of James there is telling us. When somebody is in need, and we ignore them, we don't give them what they want. We just try to ignore them and, and walk by. It is good for us as brethren that we need to demonstrate these things. When you are doing these kind of things, it is important that you help one another when you see them on the roads. I know sometimes we begin to think that when we are doing a service, physically. You see people and they don't need it. But as Christians, we have to show them that because that's what the book of James is telling us that faith and without deeds, without any works, is nothing. So it is important here really, that we begin to do those things. Especially what is telling us here in, the, in James 2.15 there is telling us that Faith without good deeds is dead. What good is it, dear brothers and sisters, if you say you have faith, but you don't show it by your actions? Can this kind of faith say anything also? Suppose you see a brother or a sister who has no food or clothing. You say goodbye and have a good day. Stay warm and eat well. But then you don't give the person any food or clothing. So it is important, brethren, that we begin to show this kind of service, continue to help one another. Show this is important to us brethren when we are doing these things because it helps us and see what we are. So we are talking earlier about the attitude of service. We should serve God with understanding so that we should understand the underlying principles and service of stewardship, which is very, very important. We have to serve God with our underlying principles of service and stewardship and offer what we render in the kingdom of God, it is important. Because if we understand, it makes us to value what we are serving, especially with Abel. Abel was able to value what he gave to God. He gave the fattest part of his animals to God, whilst the other brother came up with something which was outdated, old fruits. So it is important, brethren, that we begin to see how we should have this passion about stewardship, about service, our attitude and passion is very, very important. The Bible says we must be great, says among us must be a servant of God. The greatest among all must be a servant of God. A servant must be a steward, a sense of accountability. We have to be accounted for what we do, especially when we are servants of God. We have to be accountable. The book of Titus tries to tell us what we do as Christians what we should be doing as men of God, what we do when we come to the pulpit, what we are supposed to do when we are serving, because we are accountable. We have to serve others, so we have to serve God in difficult and bad times as well. Let's look at that scripture and see what it tries to tell us about accountability. Titus 1, verse 7 to 10. of Titus. Titus 1. For an elder must live a blameless life. He must not be arrogant or quick-tempered. He must not be a heavy drinker, violent or dishonest with money. Rather, he must enjoy having guests in his home. And he must love what is good. He must live wisely and be just. He must live devout and disciplined life. He must have a strong belief in the trustworthy message he was taught. Then he will be able to encourage others with wholesome teaching 
and show those who oppose it which are wrong. Let's see what King James says about this in the book of Titus. Titus 1. And he goes down to say from 7 to 10. He says, For a bishop must be blameless as a steward of God, not self willed, not quick tempered, not given to wine, not violent or greedy for the money, but hospitable, hospitable, a lover of what is good, sober minded, just holy, self controlled, holding fast and faithful word as he has been taught that he may be able to be sound doctrine, but exhort and convict those who contradict. So here we can see again that we're talking about the services we provide, but as a bishop is concerned here, a bishop should be someone who should be blameless. He should have self-control. He should not be accused of anything whatsoever. He should not be quick-tempered. He should not also abuse himself by taking wine and coming to provide a service to God. We have to be accountable. And that's why we're saying when we're doing a service to God, we have to show how important the principle of service is, how it understand it makes us the value of what we do and appreciate it. And if we understand it, it is very, very important that we have this passion and seriousness when we're doing the service of God. And that is what Abel was able to do. And there again, they're giving us an example of the bishop Today we see how a lot of men of God go down there and provide a service to God and they abuse their powers. They do a lot of things which are not accepted. So it is important, brethren, that we begin to see how important it is. The Bible says in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 2, that we have to be showing services in season and out of season. We have to continue to do this. Preach the gospel also and serving God, which is more important in our lives. So it is important, brethren, that we begin to see how stewardship and service plays a very, very important role in our lives. So when we talk about service, it is important, brethren, that we begin to see how service plays an important role in our lives. Service is, is very, very important. And according to the working definition we mentioned earlier, is the spiritual discipline of service means choosing to do something for someone else, often. We offer to do something else without any payback. We do not expect to be paid. Service involves seeing a new needs, meeting needs, expecting thanks of any type so far. So it is important, therefore, that brethren will begin to show how we can show service. Serving God also with interest in the kingdom secures your future. When you serve God and you do things in the kingdom of God, it will secure your future. So it is also good that we give service to God and not man. We therefore have to be servants. For those who are just coming in, I just have to go through what we've just done earlier. We're also talking about the type of services we have. We have two types of services. We have the physical service and then we have the spiritual service. The physical service, we can see that sometimes we do that basically by going out down there to help the homeless, by going out down there to do a lot of things like um, helping people who are in need. We also go out down there and do a lot of things like um, somebody who is homeless. We have to grow into the kingdom and show how we do that. The orphanage, looking after the elderly people, those who are in need also, and we we'll see how we can do things. We also have another physical service like we have somebody called Richard Bronson, who is um, a business magnet, who provides services for us like Virgin Atlantic, Virgin Trains, Virgin Media. These are all the type of services they provide. We also have Virgin Phones. We also have another um, service from British Rail, British Gas, British Airways. All these are services. But the most important services 
we are concentrating on today is the spiritual service. And when we are talking about spiritual service, we gave an example of Cain and Abel, where Cain was able to provide a service which was not fruitful in his terms of offering, and it was rejected by God. But when we talk about um, Abel's, Abel served the Lord with humility. He served the Lord with everything that he wanted to do. He didn't actually, um, he had to provide his offering with quality. He was very transparent in what he did. He did a lot of things which are very, very good. So it is important that we actually take our whole attitude when we are serving the Lord. We have to serve our whole Lord with quality, with respect. We have to take things very, very seriously. And these are the attitudes we have to do. And the main scripture here we read was Exodus chapter 23. And let's read that scripture. Exodus 23, 25 to 33. Exodus 23, 25 to 33, it says, So if you serve the Lord your God, he will bless your bread and your water. And he will take sickness away from the beasts of you. No one shall suffer miscarriage or barren in your land. I will fulfill the number of your days. I will send my fear before you, and I will cause confusion amongst all the people to whom you come. I will make all your enemies turn their backs to you. And I will send hornets before you, which shall drive out Hivites, Canaanites, and Hittites from you before you. And I will not drive them out from before you in one year, lest the land become desolate, and the beasts of the field become too numerous and new. So here again is a very good example that if you serve the Lord, He will bless your water, and He will bless your bread, and there will be no barrenness, there will be no sickness in the land. So it is important, brethren, that we begin to show, and that was the good examples we gave earlier on about it. And also, we had in the church the various type of um, services we provide in the church. Quite a lot. We have the sanctuary service, we have the calm team as well we provide, we have the ushers, we have the choristers, we have the choir, the ushers, different type of services that we provide in the church. But it is important that when we do this work for God, we have to do it with our whole soul and mind. So how do we start? We have to start with understanding. We have to understand the underlying principles of service, especially in terms of stewardship. When we are doing services of God, we have to do the right things. We have to do what is expected of us. And we have to do the right things which God has given us. So that when we walk together, we walk with our whole soul, spirit and body. And which is very, very important. There's another scripture here we are going to look at, which is Luke chapter 18, verse 28 to 30. And there it reads, then Peter said, See, we have left all that followed you, uh, and followed you. He said to them, Assuredly, I say to you, there is no one who has left house, or parents, or brothers, or wife, or children, for the sake of the kingdom of God, who shall not receive many times more in the present time, and the ages to come, eternal life. They've left everything, and they've followed Jesus, which is very, very important. And they will receive more in abundance. They will receive more in abundance. They will receive in manifolds. And when you do the work of God and you do things and leave everything and follow, you will get the benefits. So it is also very good for us that when we do spiritual services, we take part in a lot of things like evangelism, serving the choir, praise and worship, cleaning. We have the sanctuary team as well who do part of the cleaning in the church. We have an intercessory group as well who are people who pray for one another, pray for the church. So it is very, very important, brethren, that we begin to see how important stewardship is helps in our Lord. So then again, another question I'm going to ask is, why do you think sometimes people don't want to serve God? What are the issues? What are the problems? Why do you think people don't want to serve God? What are the main problems that stop people from serving God? Any contribution, any input to this? What are the reasons why people don't like to serve God? Or what stops them from serving God? Yes, sir. I think one, they don't want to be offended. Two, 
they don't understand or know the benefits um, in serving the Lord. For me, those are the two things that stand out. Some people come in, they want to come in Nicodemus week and then just go um, because of maybe I don't want to be offended, I don't want to get in anyone's way. And then also um, lack of understanding the benefits. Or so they don't know how to commit. They don't want, I don't know, lack of commitment, dedication. Yeah, not understanding the benefits of serving. Yes. It's important not understanding the benefits. The benefits is very, very important. A very good example can give is Abraham. Abraham had his last son, Isaac, and was asked to sacrifice him. But he had faith in Jesus. He had faith in God that if he does that, nothing will happen so far. He didn't expect that to happen. But as a matter of fact, we can see that he had faith. There are a lot of people today who do not have faith. They don't see the, the benefits and they don't know how important is it. So sometimes weariness is one of the reasons where people get tired and therefore they don't want to listen to the word of God. They don't want to know about the word of God anymore. They don't, as our sister said earlier, the benefits and sometimes some people are not interested. Therefore they become weary and therefore they don't want to serve God. But it is also important for us to take the, listen to the word of God. Because the word of God is very quick and powerful and sharp as to Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12 tells us says, the word of God is powerful, sharp as a two-headed sword. And it's also important for us that we see how the word of God is when we look at the book of Hebrews chapter 12 verse 1 to 3. Can somebody read that scripture please? Hebrews 12 1 to 3. Amen. That's discipline as well, in terms of doing that. Therefore, since we have surrounded by such huge crowd of witnesses to the life of faith, let us strip off every weight that surrounds us, especially sin. And therefore, let us run with endurance a race. Because sometimes we have these clouds that are always around us. And let us run with endurance. We have to keep our eyes on Jesus. Because he's the champion. He is the author and finisher of our faith. We have to believe in him. And therefore we continue to. But sometimes we have this cloud around us. Which probably sometimes distracts us. Slows us down. Especially strip off every weight we have. It tries to slow us down. And therefore that is what the book of Hebrews there is telling us. That we have this cloud which surrounds us and slows us down. And therefore, we have to look into Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. And when we look into him, he will actually lead us. And we won't have any doubts or any problems. We've also looked at that scripture earlier on Luke, uh, Exodus 23, 25, and Luke 28, 30. When people's expectations are also not met, so people, therefore, the people will not like to continue serving God, especially some people when they are indefinitely leave to remain in this country has not been fulfilled at the moment. They tend to therefore give up and don't want to continue to pray or continue to do the right things because they feel they have been let down and therefore they don't want to do any services anymore. They don't want to come to church and do the work that they used to do before. They don't want to come and clean the church. They don't want to come and do evangelism. They don't want to come and sing in the church take part in the choir because their indefinite leave has not been successful. But you don't do things like that. You have to just continue to have faith in God because God will always help us. He will always do a lot of things. Let's look at that scripture, Romans 12 verse 10.
be kindly and affectionate to one another with brotherly love in honor and giving preference to one another. And then their first Peter 4, verse 10 to 11 also tries to tell us how first Peter 4, 11 to 10. 10 to 11. Let's speak to 4, 10 to 11. Let's speak to 4, 10 to 11. Amen. If you receive what she just read earlier on, each one who receives each gifts, administer that to one another. Show them. Show that service that you have. If you have the gift of speaking in tongues, if you have the gift of preaching, if you have the gift of interpretation, try and give that out. Do that as a service, and that's what the book of Peter there is saying on 1 Peter 4, verse 10 to 11. And therefore, it's telling us here that as each one has received a gift, minister it to one another as good as stewards of the manifold grace of God. If anyone speaks, let him speak as the oracles of God. If any ministers, let him do which is the ability which also God supplies them, that all things God made are glorified through Jesus, to whom who belongs to the glory and the dominion of all men. So it is good brethren that we continue to do these things. We don't have to just give up. And because some people sometimes pray, and when they don't get things done, they give up. They don't want to continue. It is good, brethren, that we continue to do the right things. Do what is important. When people are not grounded also in the word of God, that is another thing that sometimes allows them to actually give up. And they don't want to take part in actually serving the Lord. You have to be grounded in the word of God. You have to have a good spiritual understanding of the Word of God. Because the Word of God is quick and powerful and sharp as to any sort, piercing through the bone marrows. So it is important, brethren, that we continue to see how the Word of God is important. If a church is not growing, some pastors will sometimes try to close down the church. Why is that? Because their expectations are not met. They will come like lukewarm Christians, therefore. But it is important that, brethren, that when a church is not growing, you have to just try to see how you can improve the church. Try and serve the church. We have a vibrant evangelist who stopped coming to church because they were caught shoplifting. Shoplifting. And therefore, the police were able to bring. But as a person of God, as a man of God, or somebody who is serving the Lord, you shouldn't be caught shoplifting. I can remember, I think I went to this. Uh, Max and Spencer's shop once in Brixton. That is where they had the Max and Spencer's there. I don't know whether they still have the Max and Spencer's there. And um, there was this 16 or 18 year old, or probably she was about 18 or so. I went down there with my Nigerian friend who had some visitors from Nigeria. I think she had, he had his cousins. One was a doctor and the other lady was a lawyer. They went for shopping in Max and Spencer's. And um, we had this Indian lady who was there, and she had her bag, handbag, and she was just trying to take out her 50 pound notes. This girl, this was a black girl, that was the most annoying thing and shameful thing about that. When she saw this, we were there, in fact, we didn't know what was happening. On the sudden, we were just looking at the things we wanted to buy, and then this girl tried to grab the lady's bag and cut. The, 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 the sleeve because she saw the 50 pound notes. So the lady was scared for her life. I was there because I had saw the lady. She was frightened. So, oh, my life, my God, um, my Bible, she took it, she took it from me, she took it. So they had to call the security guard, and the security guard there was a black guy. It was very, very shameful because it was also a black girl. And the way they held her here, and they had to drag her out of the shop and everybody was looking at this how rough and poor it is because she was involved in trying to commit a crime 
So it is important for me that we have to, when we serve the Lord, we have to be very careful, especially as a person of God, as a man of God, you have to do things the right way, not abuse your powers, not take part in shoplifting, not doing the wrong things. It is important for me that we continue to serve God with our whole hearts, with our whole minds, the attitude. Our attitudes are very, very important when we demonstrate the word of God. It is important for me that we continue to do the right things. And when we demonstrate this attitude, it will help us. We should serve God with understanding. We should have to do this with our underlying service, underlying principles, how we understand what we do. We have to do the right things. We also have to serve God day in and day out, according to the book of 2 Timothy chapter 2, 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 2, it says, we should be instant season and out of season. That's why we should be serving the Lord in both good and bad times. But today, a lot of people don't want to do that. No matter what the circumstances, if you don't get what you want from the Lord, just continue to pay, be perseverance, be what is important. We have to also try to do the right things as Christians and demonstrate what is good for us as Christians. Because when we don't do the right things, you will see how dangerous and what it is. Let's look at that scripture, Ephesians chapter 6, again verse 7 and 8, and see what it tells us. Ephesians 6 verse 7 and 8. Can somebody read that? Please from the King James Version, and I'll read that. Amen. So we, there it says that try and please them all. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 7 and 8. Try to please them all at the time, not just which they are watching you as Christ they do. Ephesians chapter 6 and 7. So here, I think the word here is telling us that we do not have to serve men, but serve God and do the right things which we are supposed to be doing, not do the wrong things. And remember that the Lord will reward each one of us if we do the good things that we do. Walk with enthusiasm. That is what the word there is telling us. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 7 and 8. Walk with enthusiasm as truly you were walking for the Lord rather than for people. We have to walk for the Lord and not work for rather than people that we are. We are not here to serve pastor, but we are here to serve the Lord. We have to work with enthusiasm. We have to provide service, and service is important for us as Christians, brethren. And we have to do the right things that we do. And when we work with God, when we leave everything, we leave our families, our children, and everything, and we we'll serve the Lord, we will get benefits. And therefore, that is why it is important that the word is telling us there in Exodus 23, 22, which tells us that if we serve the Lord, our God, He will bless our water and bread. There will be no barrenness. There will be no famine. There will be no problems. And it is important for that we continue to do the right things and not be carried away, not be prevented. Don't be wary. If you pray for the Lord sometimes and you don't get it, that's why we have the intercessory prayer groups who meet and pray for the church and pray for one another. Agape love, wherever we show this love for one another. Our prayers will be answered. Don't just give up and say, I don't want to do any services anymore for the Lord because I have not received what I have been asking for. But it is important really that we continue to do the work of God. So we are going to close that with this last scripture which is taken from the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 2. 1 Corinthians 4, verse 2. First Corinthians 4, verse 2. Moreover, it is required in stewards that one be found faithful. It is important that everything we do for God, we have to be found faithful. We don't want any kind of 
issues where we go to serve God and we are not being faithful in what we do. And we can see the book of Titus there is telling us about the bishops. The bishops should respect themselves when they come on the altar. They should not be smelling of wine or drink alcohol and come and preach the word of God. They have to be decent. You have to be respectful when you come to, to the word of God, especially when you are doing the service of God. So it is the person bringing that we continue to do the right things and therefore follow the right principles. And that will help us therefore that if we continue to serve the Lord, He will bless our water, He will bless our bread, and there will be no sicknesses, there will be no problems in our lives. All this we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. So we're going to ask um, Mom Joy to close down in prayer for us, please.